Now we're going to take a look at our tools panel. Keep in mind we'll be working with these tools in much more detail as we work through the series. By default, the tools panel is located on the left hand side of our workspace and it's displayed as a single column. You'll notice at the bottom of my screen, part of my tools panel is cut off because of the resolution I'm working at. So I'm going to choose to display my tools panel as a double column so that you'll be able to see everything. Clicking on the arrows at the top of the tool panel will swap my panel from single column to two column. As we look at our tools panel, you'll notice that some of the tools have a white triangle on the corner. Any of the tools that have a white triangle tell us that there are hidden tools underneath. So if I click and I hold on a tool that has a little triangle on it, we can then display the hidden tools. You'll also notice as I display these hidden tools, we can see the names of all the tools, the icon for that tool, and we can also see the shortcut for the tool. For instance, we now see the brush tool. By pressing the letter B on my keyboard, I will make that tool active in the tools panel as I'm working. If the brush tool is not currently the active tool for that tool grouping, then the tool that is active, such as the pencil tool or the color replacement tool, will become the tool that becomes active upon pressing B. The tools are divided in categories. The first category are the selection tools. The selection tools include the move tool, the marquee tools, the lasso tools, and the selection tools. The selection tools are used to select an area of an image or multiple areas of an image. When you have something selected, you can then apply effects or filters to that area without the rest of the image being affected. The next category is called Crop and Slice. The Crop and Slice tools are all located under the Crop tool. The Crop and Slice tools separate or divide an image. Measuring is our next category. Those are all the tools under the eyedropper tool and including the eyedropper tool. These tools are used to draw measurement lines, select color samples, and create comments. Our next category are called the retouching tools. Retouching tools are used to correct images for any flaws, such as scratches, red eye, and blemishes. These include spot healing brush, the clone stamp tool, the eraser tool, the blur tool, and the dodge tool, and all the hidden tools beneath those tools I just mentioned. The painting tools, which include the brush tool, the history brush tool, and the gradient tool, and all the tools underneath those, are used to paint pixels on the canvas. This can be done on a blank canvas or this can be done on an image. The drawing and type tools include the type tools, the pen tool, the path selection tool, and the shape tools, including the rectangle tool. The drawing and type tools are vector-based tools which draw vector paths. A vector is an image that when drawn and resized to be made larger does not lose the quality in the image. A bitmap image is an image that's when resized becomes pixelated and you see the little squares and you lose your resolution. All the other tools work in the bitmap mode. Finally we have our navigation tools. This includes the hand tool and the tool underneath it and the zoom tool. These tools are used to navigate around our open image. They'll allow us to zoom into our image or zoom out of our image. And if our image does not fit on our screen, the hand tool will let us move our image around so we can look at a specific part of it. At the bottom of our tools panel, those squares, the black and white square, the square in the front is our foreground color. The square in the back is our background color. We can use this little double-headed arrow to swap the foreground and the background. If we change our color by clicking on the square and selecting a different color in our color picker, the icons just below the foreground and background colors can be used to reset those back to the default black and white. And then we also have our screen modes. So we can look at our images and remove all of our panels and our application bar if we want to look at our image in full screen mode. As we select different tools on the tools panel, you'll notice at the top of our screen, the panel just below the application bar, which is called the options bar, changes based on the tool that's selected. That means it's a context sensitive panel and will allow us to customize each of the tools that we select. 
by changing those options that become available on the options panel.